Welcome to another TK Actions Quick Tip. In this one, I'm gonna show you how you can access and apply masks that you've saved in the channels panel. This quick tip comes from a question from a TK Actions user, Chris Anson. And Chris is a commercial drone pilot, photographer, and videographer. His company is Portland Pro Drones out of Portland, Oregon. And he's also a writer for the Photo Focus website. So I'll link to all of Chris's stuff in the description below. So he says, the question is about masks I have saved using the channel button in the output section of the Rapid Mass module. Once you save a mask as a channel, how do you access it later or apply it to a layer or an adjustment? So thanks for that question, Chris. Uh, it's a little bit of uh, an advanced question for uh, maybe people who are new to using the Tiki Actions panel and luminosity masks in general. But I think to a lot of intermediate to advanced users, if you're not already aware of how to access uh, mass that you've saved for later use in the channels panel. How can you get those back and how can you apply them to uh, layer mass, adjustment layers, and uh, even access them again to modify and output them in other ways. I think that's a useful thing. So let's take a look at it and see if, uh, if I can help clear that up. First, let's start with adding a little context to Chris's question. Most often I'm not permanently saving my luminosity mass. I simply use the panel to generate a mask that I need and I use it either by outputting it to a certain type of adjustment layer or some other layer that I want to use or maybe by making a selection of it and then using that selection for a technique like luminosity painting or custom mask painting. And then when I was done with that mask, I would continue working on the image, making other adjustments. If I needed another mask in the future, I would probably select a new source and that new source will reflect the tones in the image at this time. So in that way, my luminosity masks are constantly updating and refreshing along with the image as I go. So why would I ever want to permanently save a mask? Well, let's say I spent a fair amount of time kind of modifying a mask, getting it perfected just how I wanted it so that it would perfectly target certain tones that were in the image or a certain part or area of the image. And I thought that that mask would be particularly useful maybe over and over again during my developing process. Or I thought that if I did want to use that same mask again, it would be really difficult or maybe even impossible to recreate that exact same mask again. So in a case where I thought I had a good chance of wanting to use that exact same mask again, I would probably want to save it into the channels panel so I could get it at any time. And that's what the channel button here in the rapid mask module is for. If I wanted to save this mask, I'd click that button. It'll ask me, what do I want to call the saved mask? And I'm just going to call it saved mask. You can call it whatever you want. And here it is in my channels panel. And now I go about my way working on the image, adding more adjustments, doing other things to it, and potentially making other different luminosity masks that reset the loom lock and rapid mask. And maybe even at some point I decided to delete the loom lock and rapid mask channels. And now I've reached the point at which I want to reuse that saved mask. So there it is in my channels panel. So the question is, how do I get it onto an adjustment layer, or some other layer that I'm working on in the image? There's two ways. The first way is very simple. It just involves clicking on the saved mask and then clicking this icon to load that mask as a selection and then adding a new adjustment layer or some other type of layer that comes with a mask and that new mask will reflect that selection. But that technique utilizes an intermediate selection. If you're just using one selection like that to create the mask, I doubt that you would ever notice any quality issues from it. But if you would like to not use any intermediate selections in your workflow at all, let's go ahead and delete this layer and I'll show you a second method that doesn't use a selection. In this method, you'd start by making the adjustment layer or other layer first and making sure that it had a mask on it and then you would make that mask active. And then you go to image, apply image. And here in the apply image dialog, you don't need to worry about 
any of these other settings other than the channel selection. And there you want to, instead of any of the other possible channels that you have available, you want to select your saved mask and click OK. And the saved mask is now automatically applied to that mask, that layer mask, with no intermediate selection involved. And now with that mask on your layer, you can use your saved mask to control the adjustment just as you wanted it in the image right where you wanted it. And at this point, if you felt like you wanted to further modify or customize that mask, you could also do that using the layer mask mode here in the rapid mask module. You just check the checkbox, and then now you can easily modify that mask. For example, by making a curves modification to the mask. So there you go. If you ever want to save masks that you've created or modified in the channels panel and then use them again later, there's some tips on how you can go about doing that. So thanks again to Chris for the question. Don't forget to go check out his, uh, his work and his articles on Photo Focus. All right, thanks for tuning in once again. And uh, as always, we'll see you again in the next one.